This is one of the most common questions I get from triathletes. So many people are asking this question, so here's the answer. What's going on, swim fans? Coach Ferris here to answer your swimming questions. First question I have is from Desmond. How can triathletes benefit from tumble turns? If you're doing a tumble turn, which means a free sell, a somersault flip turn, it means you're kind of taking your swimming to the next level. It means you're a little bit more advanced. Now, you don't have to do this if you're training for open water or triathlon, but the question is, how can triathletes benefit from this? Because the thought is, when you're in the open water, there's no wall, there's no flip turn. So doing that is just a waste of time. You wanna train your body to swim continuously. So that's a good logical argument, and here's the argument why you should do tumble turns. So when you do a streamlined push off the wall, you are getting the maximum speed that you have when you swim. You will always be slower swimming compared to when you push off the wall. So you might be thinking, well, that's cool if I'm in the pool, but in open water, there's no reason to have that extra boost. And you're wrong. So here's why you want that extra boost. You wanna train your body to swim as fast as possible. So when you start out off the wall and you have a push, you are swimming faster than you ever will. You wanna take advantage of that and train your body and your body position, what it feels like to swim at that rate, and you wanna maintain that as long as possible. So that's the argument for why streamline is so important and pushing off the wall and really maximizing, not really your distance off the wall, but your speed off the wall and then translating that into your first few strokes and then of course the rest of the length. So whether you swim in a 25 meter or a 50 meter pool, it's so important that you leverage the speed off of the wall. That's the argument for streamline because you're leveraging your speed off the wall into the stroke and you wanna teach your body how to swim high in the water. So here's the argument for the actual tumble turn. So that it comes before the actual streamline. So if you pause and you take a breath, when you do the open turn, that is not what you're gonna be doing in open water either. So if you think about it, a flip turn is actually more physically taxing on your body and it sets you up better for the streamline push because when you do a somersault flip turn, you're already going to be in streamline coming off the wall. So we already talked about why streamline is so important. So now if you do the tumble turn, you are basically positioning yourself better for that streamline push and it's more physically taxing to do that rotation and go into the streamline. It's actually easier to just grab the wall and jerk yourself around. So that you're definitely not going to do in the open water. So you may as well leverage the streamline, get a good push and teach your body how to swim faster in the water. Of course, it's totally optional. I know plenty of people who have done full Ironmans and crazy open water distances with no flip turns at all. So don't feel like there's a right way and a wrong way, but there are plenty of benefits to doing a tumble turn if you're doing open water or a triathlon. Next question comes from Matt. What is the best way to determine how close I am to the wall when I'm doing the backstroke? I'm always worried about running into it. Yeah, this is, this is a tough one. So hopefully the pool that you swim at has backstroke flags. And these are things, these are basically flags that are five meters off the edge of the pool. So they're on both ends, whether it's a 25 meter or a 50 meter pool, and it's standard across every pool. So what you wanna do is you wanna learn what's called your stroke count. So when you're swimming backstroke, you take a certain number of strokes from when you see the flags right above your eyes until you actually hit the wall. For some swimmers, it's three strokes, others four, others five, others six. You know, hopefully you're under 10 strokes. If you're not there, we've, we've got some training programs for you to improve your backstroke technique, but you should be anywhere from three to six strokes from the time you see the flags to where you actually... I couldn't hear what you said. Even the Apple Watch is trying to answer this question. So you wanna make sure you know your stroke count, how many strokes it takes to go from the flags to the wall on a full finish. And the same thing applies when you're doing a backstroke flip turn. So if you're going backstroke to backstroke, you're doing a 50, 100, 200, whatever it is, um, or in the IM, you wanna know how many strokes you take so you can take one off of them and then you can flip turn on your stomach. So let's say your stroke count is five. You know that when you see the flags, you're gonna see the flags, and then you take one, two, three, four, five, and then you finish on your back with your hand pointed back. So if you take five to the finish, that means you're gonna take four to the turn. So you take your stroke count, and then you subtract one, and the reason why you do that is because on that fourth stroke, you're actually gonna rotate onto your stomach and you should have one more stroke remaining to get you into a flip turn. So you take that one stroke on your stomach and that's gonna be on your front and you're gonna do a normal somersault turn, but it's even easier in backstroke because you just stay on your back. So you do the flip turn, your feet are planted on the wall, you hit the streamline and then boom, you push off in streamline on your back. So that's one of the best ways that you can be aware of the wall. Now let's say you don't have flags and this is actually pretty common in a lot of pools where you don't have any backstroke flags so even if you know your stroke count 
it's really not gonna help you. So you can learn your stroke count for the entire length, so 25 meters, and you know that you take 15 strokes or 20 strokes, and that gives you a better indication so you're less concerned on the first 10 or 15. Now you do wanna be careful because depending on how long your underwater is, other variable factors in the pool, it could throw you off and that's how you have a collision with your head in the wall. So we don't wanna have that. Instead, make sure you're very aware of what your stroke count is, and it, even if you don't know it for the length of the pool, you can also use in some pools other markings, whether it's the ceiling, uh, a pole, or the ladder, and if you see the ladder uh, at the edge of the pool, and you're still swimming, the wall's probably right there. So you wanna be careful with that. Um, I also use sometimes the lane marker because there are no flags, but the lane marker does change color five meters out. Not all pools are like that, so make sure you double check that before you follow this. And that just a few different variables around the pool that are not the flags, just to vantage point where you're at and where you're going. So I hope that was helpful. If you have any other questions, let me know down below in the comments. Coach Ferris reporting for Q&A. Also join our MySwim Pro community. We have the biggest digital swimming community in the world on Facebook, free to join. I'm in there, the MySwim Pro team is in there, and we love sharing tips and tricks to help you swim faster and smarter than ever before. Wish you the best and happy swimming. Bye.